All right. Hi, everyone. Get the headphones off. All right, so I've been playing around with these camera settings because with the new light and everything, it kind of made things wonky, but I think we got some things figured out here. So look at that. No more jumping around. It's actually focusing for me. So yay. Let me just get the chat going and see who we have here. Ah, uh, there's Dive Crew Canada. Hello. And Vincent stopped in. And we have Andy. So hey, how you doing, guys? Nice to see you here. I just looked at the microphone because I forgot I shifted my camera over. But yes, yeah, so I'm going to be working on finishing up this handsome fellow. Um, basically, it's going to be some detail work and some highlighting with it. And I will be sure, like I did for the first episode, that all of the paints are going to be listed in the description below, the ones that I decided to go with. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'm also doing a voting poll over on Twitter for people to pick the next mini to get painted. And they all have a nice spooky theme because we're going to be moving into October and it's like my favorite time of the year with Halloween. So thought something spooky would be great. And uh, <clears throat> if for some reason the sound needs adjusting, please, as always, just let me know. And if you have any questions, just put them in through the chat because I can see it right now. And let me first pull out the guys for the minis. So I'm going to show you who's who's on deck to potentially win. And it's a mix. I have some from Bones. I have some from Nozers. All right. So we have first up as an option, the ghouls. So I could potentially be painting these for you guys. Or we have the Wrath, or Wraith, depending on how you pronounce it, and Spectre. And these are the cool guys because uh, they have like that translucent factor going on with them. And I know a lot of people are getting into doing the translucent minis. And then I have this guy. He is called Ghost King. But he's another pretty interesting guy. He's got a lot of details on him too. So that's another one up for votes. And then finally I have, and he definitely needs a hot water bath because he's a little bent. Uh, we have Judas Bloodspire Vampire from Bones. All right. So those are the four that are up for voting. And what I'm going to do is let me just quickly flip back over to my Twitter, pull up the link one more time, and I will share it in the chat just in case you missed it. And then that way, if you have a Twitter account, you can also go over and vote. If you don't have a Twitter account, just uh, plug it into the chat. And we should be able to tally votes towards the end. So that being said, let me just get my uh, doo -doo -doo, camera set back up. This is the fun thing about toggling back and forth between things. All right, there we go. That'll work. So yeah, basically, um, Griffin's all dried from his first bakes coat. If you missed it, you can catch part one on the channel. All the live streams persist. And then, you know, let me just get these guys. I'm so neat. I'm just going to drop these gently next to me so I have more table space. So we're going to work on him. Well, I'm going to work on him, and we're going to chat and figure things out. Well, thank you, Andy. I'm glad you like the way the Griffin looks already. I'm just going to fine-tune him a little bit more is really what it's boiling down to. Um, let me get my brushes out. <laughs> and this time I remembered to get a clean palette. Silly me. I couldn't find it last time. All right, so I've got my brushes. I've got him. I really do like the way he came out. So basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing dry brush techniques here just to bring out those feather details a little bit more. And then um, on the inside here, again, I'm going to be working on the wings, bringing this lighter brown down to more of like a beigey white, which is actually going to be bone white from the Vallejo paints. So I think I'm actually going to start working on the interior of the wings, then work my way out to the outer wings, and then I'll do the body. And if we have time, then I'll be doing the stone that he's standing on. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do for him as a base. I kind of have to look through my collection and see if anything's sort of standing out for me. So we'll see. We'll get there in time. All right. Put some bone light down. Now, again, when you dry brush, this is a very, in this case especially, this is a very light touch, right? And I'm just trying to get a nice flat brush I want to use. Where did it go? Here we go. All right. So what I like to do for dry brushing is I'll use a wider brush on it just to kind of cover the area. Uh, 
Well, hate to break it to you, Mr. Uh, DM Insomnia. They're early because of the people over in Europe. I want to make sure there's something going on with the channel that they can come in and participate. So I know it's a little early for us in the States, especially us on the West Coast, but uh, it's just the way it works. Got to be fair to everyone. And let's see here, especially because a lot of like the other things I'm doing with gameplay and um, whatnot, it's kind of hard for people to jump on on those when it's, you know, two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start up with, I'm gonna bring up the details in these feathers, all right? Now, when you do a dry brush, you wanna make sure, and I always use the pad of my thumb just to check and make sure it's not too much. And then it's a basic pulling up and back. Now, I wanna be careful that I'm not getting the brown tips here because those are completely a different color so I don't want to blur them out with white but as you can see it starts to heighten the look of those feathers and you get those tones underneath <laughs> yay us yes Vincent's in the UK so you know just one of those things where easy enough to do when the uh, kiddos are off to school and I'm at home and I can work on doing this And always with dry brushing, keep your hand light. You're not out to get into every nook and cranny. You're actually just getting those high spots. And whenever I do wings, I always try and pull from the bottom of the feathers back. So that way you're not dipping it into areas where you actually kind of want there to be sort of an assumed shadow from the feathers layering on top of each other. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do here with this. Happy to report. I think I've finally gotten ahead of this cold turned into <laughs> self destruct mode. Thank goodness for antibiotics. I don't know if any of you watched the game I played Thursday night on Mini Terrain Domain, but my voice was ridiculously low by that game, and it was just too funny. It really was a riot. Well, I miss you too, DM Insomnia. I feel like we're like two ships passing in the night anymore. I don't know about you, but it's like this this summer was just nuts. And I couldn't even tell you why it was such a crazy time, but it was just relentless. Relentless. So I'm kind of liking that fall as a slightly more manageable chaotic. Is that, there we go. <laughs> It's manageable chaos. Okay, so yeah, I'm liking the way that looks. So yeah, here we go with, as you can see, it just sort of, there. It pops out the wings, and this gives you the look of how the feathers look, because this is, remember, a red tail hawk that I'm using as inspiration. So that's one wing compared to the other wing. So you can see where I'm going with this one. Let's see, who else jumped in? Ari Gorilla, hello Ari Gorilla, thank you for stopping by. And again, if you have a Twitter account, you can go over and vote for the next mini. And they all have a spooky, spooky theme to them. I'll hit you like that. This is gonna be slightly awkward. Okay. Hmm, how to paint this? I don't know, this may have to go out of shot for a little bit. It's the problem. I want you to see what I'm doing, but I also need to see what I am doing. Yeah, we'll go with that. Close enough. But yes, we're, uh, well, I am. I'm getting all excited for. Ah, <laughs> oh, Springs. I love it. That That's a great name. Thank you for the laugh. And no worries. <laughs> No worries about apologizing. I get it. Hey, if I kept my old name from God AOL, it would be Velvet Wings. That was my old, my old, old name. Um, oh, hey, Jason, how you doing? Nice to see you here as well. And let's see. Uh, hey, if you if you gotta work, DCC, you gotta work. I totally understand that. All right, here we go. Now I'm getting the bone white onto the under feathers on the other wing. 
And the nice thing about dry brushing is it's actually pretty darn quick, which is why I'm pretty sure this guy's gonna get finished up today, simply because there's not that much more to do. I really lucked out in terms of these base colors going on as I had hoped, which makes a huge difference. So you're going to have to forgive me. There's some angles where I need to see what I'm doing here. So I'm not going to be able to aim it to the camera until after the fact. But, you know, if you're worried about doing dry brushing, just practice on cheap pre-painted minis. And that way you get a feel for how to do it to enhance things. Oh, and if, if you're not on Twitter, um, for those of you who did see him, and I'll show him again one more time. And then everyone can just kind of pipe up if they want to. I'll show the minis one more time. There, you can see how that wing looks now. Um, which ones are up for the voting? All right, now it's the same color that went down, like showing you parts that aren't even in screen. I also brought that bone white down through here, so I'm gonna do the dry brushing on the upper portion of the legs, not where the claws are. Yeah, well, a lot of times DCC, like I said in the other live stream, is I, I like to pull from actual animals or buildings or not even people sometimes because to me it just helps me get better point of reference for colors and everything like that yes i agree painting minis springs is extremely therapeutic and relaxing um i also try and make sure that the music i have playing in the background sort of follows suit so if there's ever a style of music you'd like to hear on the live streams do let me know because right now i've kind of cycled through some deep house music and then uh, I'm doing this nice little guitar oh this is a fun angle uh, compilation and the cool thing is is that these are all songs off of YouTube which helps what's Twitter yeah what's Twitter Jay I wonder mr. Jay's having an amazing giveaway going on right now which uh, Jay if you want to type in your handle at Twitter by all means so people can go check it out because uh, those alternate covers, yeah, there's no way I'm painting this without getting it close to me, guys, sorry. Um, the alternate covers for a few of those lovely books we all love. He's doing a giveaway on those. And it's pretty darn sweet. Okay, so now you can see his underwings brought back out a little bit, but we have the depth of detail now, which is what they wanted. Let's see here, Metallica. How's Metallica relaxing? <laughs> I don't think that one would fly. That might cause some uh, people running away. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's the other thing. I have to make sure it's music that's been cleared. So instead of like specifics, give me thematics. How's that? Because uh, as much as I love being able to play songs, it's not worth risking it for... Uh, a nice little ding all right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move on to this other color and it's gonna be for where the uh, what was that other I think it was called parasite was that it yeah parasite brown that I first did it's sort of like around here I'm gonna switch over to using this uh, tan from Vallejo I'm just reading the chat right now yeah yeah Julio you've you've found a lovely relaxing rabbit hole <laughs> is really what it boils down to um, you know it's pretty it's pretty incredible to see people who start getting into mini painting and they just don't just get into it for the need of they wanted minis painted they realize this is something really cool and something I can kind of embrace and feel calm and collected with and it just kind of gives you those few hours or whatever to relax and breathe and not have to worry about things so I am a <laughs> yeah Jay's uh, notifications have been going crazy for him because of everything all right so here we go moving on to the tan these feathers which are gonna be slightly tricky because I have three different direction feathers to work with so I'm just gonna dry brush this tan on and in this case, it's okay to blend your 
colors a little bit because the feathers of the red tailed hawk do sort of blur into each other. Oh, that's a fun angle. There we go. All right, that's going to give you an idea of yoink. As you can see, it's just bringing back in those tones. Thank you. I'm glad you like the underside of the wings. It's uh, it's it's partly my obsession when I'm trying to base it off of an actual creature. I will take a look at the pictures and study them a little bit. I'm actually going to take some of this tan and just slightly bring it down the edges of the wings here. So you can see right there. All right, so that color is taken care of. And then it's going to wrap around onto his hindquarters because that too is the same color as those feathers. I know people use paper towels. I just find the pad of my thumb gives me a far better feeling for how the paint's going to transfer onto the mini. And it just creates a lot less work for me personally. You can use your paper towel if that's what you like to use. I am all for that. It's just that I personally, I never seem to get the right feel for it. So I just default back to uh, what's more familiar. But right now I'm basically highlighting his musculature on the hindquarters just to bring it out a little bit so things pop a little bit more on him just so you can kind of tell the difference let's see here looking at the chat again ooh three people watching over your shoulder oh tell them hi for me It's like a cinema viewing mode. I'm happy to say everyone in the family has finally landed on Halloween costumes, which I'm quite excited about. And I think I have to make uh, how many need to can get some a little bit of can made. Thing. I think it's there's a couple things I need to do for my husband's costume. Definitely a couple things for my oldest costume because he decided that he wants to be Doctor Strange. Which, FYI, they don't have Doctor Strange costumes really that much uh, for younger kids. So, got that figured out at least as to what I'm going to do to make his up. And then I did put the little holster for my son's, my other son's sword, because he's going to be Link, onto his belt. And he's thrilled to bits about that. He's been running around the house wearing it. <laughs> his booty, yeah. Thanks, DCC. Appreciate that. Yeah, basically because I really like the way the um, smoky ink thinned out worked as a uh, wash. I'm not going to focus on doing another wash on this. I'm going to just leave this as the highlight mode. Um, unless I do something that's a big uh, oops. And we'll go back to a wash. Okay, and then we just get the tail. Okay, so there we go. Now he just pops a little bit more. Love that I'm showing you Griffin butt, but that enhances his musculature. <laughs> Two have subscribed and one's getting dirty looks. Should I shoot him the eyebrow? Subscribe. Subscribe or else. Or I don't, I don't even know what else. Subscribe if you'd like to. If you enjoy it, by all means. <laughs> oh, Christian, I just saw your comment. <laughs> you know what Christian said. And then, oh, I owe you guys a dancing group. Who's working? All right, so here's my buddy. He actually sits by me all day, and if I'm getting bored and I want to do a little cheer me up, I just gotta. I am Groot. This is what he does. This is, this is group. <laughs> so he dances around, and I think there's a setting where I can have it where he dances around while I talk. But um, I had to tuck him over here for now so my other stuff can be on the back. I have him usually stored, and I don't want him to dance himself onto the floor and break. Let's see. Da -da -da -da. 
doing an internship in Canada. Oh, that's cool, yo. That is awesome. Congratulations on that. And then, uh, oh, uh, Christian, <laughs> we can't have links sent in from other people besides moderators because, uh, actually, let me try this one. Wait, that trick let me do. Ah, did that work? We'll see. Um, problem with direct links is we've had some issues of links being shared in the past, so I have it basically set up where, uh, myself and moderators only can post links just because uh, trying to keep it relatively PG-13 and not NC-17. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that's exciting that you, um, Julia, that you get to do Halloween. Do you have anything planned completely? Yeah. Dia de las Muertos. Uh, I can't speak today. Dia de Muertos is definitely a different feel. Um, that's something I would love to check out one time. I haven't had the pleasure of doing such. Okay, and this one is Earth. So what I'm going to do is use the, uh, oh, come on, Earth, there we go, for highlighting the browns. Again, just to sort of enhance the wings, feathers, and all that jazz. My hand's going to be a pretty mix of colors when I'm done. Okay, there we go. I'm going to start with these feathers first. Using just a very light touch. I don't want to overwhelm it. I just want to highlight these textures here. Bring them out just a little bit more. Painting happy little feathers. There we go. So let me pull it back. So that interior wing's pretty much done now. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. A maple syrup burrito? <laughs> what is that? Is that an actual food? Ooh, that's a lot of sugar. All right. Let's get these others going. And again, this is Super duper light. Oh, I got to do the tail too. I forgot he's got that little, the little tail nubbin right there. Let's get him. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Nice. Now we can see the texture of that. Well, I can. I'll show you in a minute. It's just really awkward angles because these beautiful spread out wings. Okay. So, rotate. There you go. So you can see the tail's got that detail added on as well. But yeah, so we have uh, Link, Doctor Strange, Tony Stark from my husband, and I'm going to be Anna Valerius from Van Helsing. That was like one of my favorite movies. Hello, Jeff. I'm fine. Thank you for asking. How are you? Thank you for joining. Always good to have people stop by. I mean, Halloween was a simple thing. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think it's any holiday. Um, things get amped up and thrown to the extreme. It happens. Uh, I don't know, I just, I just love the whole Halloween factor of you get to be someone else for a little bit, which is also probably why, you know, absolutely adore playing D&D &D because you get to uh, immerse yourself in another world and kind of try on being someone different as well. Now the thing with these wings is that they're gonna also get a little bit of bone white because red tail hawks have white that's sort of dispersed a little bit through the back part of the wings. It's a sin not to have tried maple syrup. Oh, Canadian maple syrup. Now I'm following that conversation. It's like, what, what? Okay. And this is really... I'm not looking for drastic, drastic contrast. I'm looking to add a little sort of glint, almost like it's in the sun type of thing. 
for these feathers. Basically adding a little bit of warmth. And as it dries, the uh, color itself tones down. And again, this is Earth from Vallejo. gonna fly away but you get all those amazing feathers which I love I'm also gonna do it around the neck and everything let's see you're doing well finally getting to catch a stream well that's awesome that you can finally catch a stream all are welcome for the streams <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been to a Tim Hortons in ages. My goodness. That's a name I haven't heard in a while. So tomorrow is going to be a very interesting day for me because I'm actually playing two online games. Um, for those of you who are on Twitter, you probably have seen that I'm going to be playing with... Um, playing on, I should say, playing on Scraticus's channel on Twitch, and I just, that's an awkward angle, sorry guys, it's got to go out of frame, and I just finished getting her pulled together, it's going to be a half-orc barbarian, and it takes place in like a space environment, so the second I found this out, I was like, yes, because I, I love Star Trek, so for me, I'm like, ah, so kind of, kind of giving nod to, uh, Worf, with this character. I can't wait. I really can't wait. Uh, so if you want to check that out, it is showing right now, actually, or soon. Sorry, the delay. It's showing uh, soon, and it gives you all the... Well, I mean, I don't live under a rock. No, yeah, Tim Hortons. I've definitely heard of that, and I've been to, like, one or two in the past. I want to say when I was, like, very young. <laughs> Let's see. I'm glad you look forward to the streams. That's a good thing. All right, so this guy's moving along nicely. All right, so here he is so far. With the highlights going on on the wings. Like, there we go. So I'm gonna let this dry a little bit and then I'll get the uh, white ridged area that happens. And then I think what I'm going to move on to now is taking care of the claws. And then I got to do the bacon. Remember, they don't have a classic um, golden color to their beaks. It's actually tipped in black and it fades. So that's going to be a little more detail work that I'll be doing. But let me get these going. And I'm going to jump back to using Plague Brown. Oh, that's cool, Jeff. Yeah, the one thing I like is being able to work from home is I can go and do things with the kids because uh, they get a kick out of seeing mom there. It's a lot of fun for them, especially. Um, unfortunately, with Halloween, there's not much you can do with them because the schools take security very seriously now. So they do like a parade where the parents can watch them sort of march around, but that's really kind of the limit of it. Let me just get this washed off. It's, <laughs> yeah, see, those are your version of our IHOPs, Denny's, and Bob Evans, depending on which region you're living in. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That cranky, rawr. Yeah, don't talk to me until I've had my nice first cup of tea. Otherwise, mm-mm. But you may get growled at, depending on how I've slept. <laughs> Just ever so gently work it so the brush is sort of pulling up. And again, it's not going to take too much. He's just got a lot of uh, funky angles. There we go. And I will do the claws next. So 
so that's gonna come in and then I'll do his face and then I'll go back and do that um this is what I need it okay so there we go with his claws he's looking sharp ah we're gonna move back to bone white I'm not giving this a full paint it's just gonna be again very light dry brushing it's 12 30 and normally for claws what I do is I literally just run it across the top area of the curved part portion 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 yeah the curved portion just to kind of bring out their detail because you don't want to make them all well it's not pure white but you don't want to make it to the point where every last inch of it is covered because then you lose the depth of things and it actually makes the claws look a little less uh, interesting as a result so see there we go with the claws da -da. okay yes yeah, so now I'm gonna start working on the face we'll give him his beauty treatment not really, but hey. All right, so just using straight up black, which I gotta make sure I should. For some reason, the black seems to separate a little bit more, but just a thorough shaking side solves that problem. <laughs> so the Griffin's French, is that what you're saying, DCC? <laughs> Peaky blinders. Can't say I know which one that is. I, I do watch relatively a good amount of B BBC shows. I almost said BCC shows because of DCC in the chat. There we go. All right, definitely want a finer tip brush, and I like the ones that have the protective covers on them, provided they come off. Ooh, gosh, who put this one on was, I need to be sure. Yeah, not gonna use that one, forget that. There we go. It's a nice little fine tip deal. And you can see my hand right there. That That's all my playing around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely do, Jeff. That'd be great. I love seeing stuff like this. Oh, I think that might be an owlbear file um, that my husband found. Because that looks familiar. Yeah, I do have an owlbear, too, that's sitting right over there. I can't wait to paint. Um, so now I'm going to start working on this beak, and I'm going to start at the very tip with the black. And no pun intended, feather the paint onto the beak because it blurs into the creamy white. So it's not a solid black beak. But I gotta tell you, red tail hawks are just gorgeous birds. All right, you guys are gonna have to forgive me because I need to bring this up closer so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'll show you what I did. How's that? Oh, that's right. I got to get his uh, tongue in there, too. That should be easy enough. Okay, so. No, shift it over. That kind of gives you an idea of how their beaks look. I'm going to do the same to the bottom. And then I'll do the tongue, and then I'll do the eyes. The baby owl, oh, oh, owl bear family, dark sword miniatures. That's the set I want to get. Um, it's a mother owl bear and her two cubs, and they are gorgeous. Uh, the other one I have is the Whiz Kids one, and that guy is awesome too. This is like, this is the first solo owl bear I've seen where the pose is just, it, it spoke to me. Let's put it that way. Um, so I'm thrilled I finally got them. But yeah, I, I have a soft spot for those owl bears. What can I say? Oops. And again, because these angles are so tight, I'm having to go out of shot a little bit just so I can actually reach what I need to paint. now we have 
is beak tipped with black as they have. I'm gonna go in and do the tongue there. I'm also just reading through the chat to see if I missed anything. <laughs> You know what I think I'm going to use? I think I'm actually going to use the tan for his tongue. Makes sense to me. Slipped a little bit. That's actually kind of nice in the fact that I have this black slip slightly, so I'm going to just touch that up a little bit. Very careful and go back in. And a little trick if you're trying to get a finer point on your brushes is you can actually roll them, your paint on them, and that helps bring the tip back to a point to make it a little bit easier. You know, just in case you haven't seen that tip yet. There we go. That's better. Yuck. Okay, so now... We got him screaming at something. His prey. His next victim. We shall see. I'll get this cleaned off. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the eyes, and they have these... That was the brush. They have these gorgeous, gorgeous yellow eyes, but what I like to use really for any eyes is this manicure tool because it has this great fine point to it and it really takes the guesswork out of getting the paint in the right spot, I'd say like 85% of the time. <laughs> so this is, this is what I use for um, doing eyeballs. I highly recommend them. Uh, you can usually find like a full manicure tool kit in any drugstore really and they're about mm, seven to ten bucks so that would be my recommendation for anyone who wants a little help with doing precise eyeballs it does really help <laughs> show it show the out there <laughs> yeah i have to like hop off my seat to reach it because i have little arms and it's out of my reach I will show the uh, other minis too for the voting and you guys can pipe in what you want and then we'll go take a look at what's happening on Twitter and I'll let you know which mini won for next week before we sign off on today. Okay, so really what I usually do is I hold, well like I have them on big pill bottles and I'll hold it up pressed up against sort of like where your sternum is just to help steady the mini and your hands. dot your eyes and like you can see the gold got added no problem so yeah this is this is a tool where get it it's very helpful yeah this one's going out of shot because there's no way I can get this angle and hold it in front of the camera that's just not happening because it's awkward oops need more paint on that not quite enough paint there we go. And there's the other eye. So nice and quick. I'm going to let this dry and then pupils using the same tool. But you do need to make sure you rinse this too. Otherwise the paint does dry on it. Uh, you're all sad now. I didn't say I wouldn't show you. I'd say I can't reach it right now. Not to worry. We'll get to him. All right, it's looking like we're gonna have time to get the base started on him. So basically what I'm gonna do for his base is because, oh, I do have some out still. Because it's sort of like a stone, I'm going to paint this up to look like a stone concept. And then I'll probably just make a quick little stone base for him, expand it out or see what I have left over um, from some of the pre-made bases I got. And I'm purposely going on a thin layer of this because I want this to dry quickly and I'm going to start layering other colors on. I'm not just painting it, painting it black and leaving it at that. Get this 
just gives me a chance for things to dry a little bit more before I go back and do the white, well not the white, but the bone white on the wings because there's still some of those I need to do the flecking that you see on Redtail Hawk's upper wing area. I'm sorry, anytime I go full on black, I always, you know, da -da 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 -da. it's just where my mind goes. And people wonder why I'm playing a bard on Thursday nights. <laughs> there have been some fun uh, Google Hangouts in the past where I actually got stuck on Copacabana for a good hour. And I just kept breaking into song with that one. Actually, I do have one of those mechanical arms, but I use it for getting things out of our washing machine because I can't reach into it all the way to the bottom. <laughs> it's quite pathetic. So I have one of those little, little old lady grabbers so I can get laundry out and, you know, grab things out of reach. Well, thank you, Mr. Chris, and thanks for joining us. Oh, Chris, David was uh, working on the water deep stuff last night, I believe. So I will keep you apprised of that one. I'm so excited. I'm actually going to get to play water deep two times because I have it going with the uh, mini terrain domain starting Monday, October 1st. And that's going to be a long haul campaign. That's that's not a mini campaign like some of the Citadel has been set up to be. Um, so tune in every Monday to Mini Terrain Domain, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time at www.youtube.com slash mini terrain domain or www.twitch.tv slash mini terrain domain. I think I have it in the description too, so that'll help. But yeah, so basically painting a rock, painting a rock, painting a rock. Always fun. And I'm very excited for the next craft video which i'm hoping i can get out friday if not friday definitely saturday i just finished doing it and i think it's going to be some pretty handy uh, terrain scatter for some people um and it, again it's one of those things i've been wanting to do for a while it's just kind of getting through the other things that i had on priority mo mode for different this will get done then and when type of situations she plays the paintbrush and the vocals. <laughs> yeah, kind of, sort of. And literally, I'm just painting the base a light, light coating of black. And it actually, it's got more of a grayish look to it right now because of that. But that's pretty much the base painted up. And I am going to let the paint kind of pool a little bit in a couple areas. Um, no. No. I actually got to talk to him about who I want to play. I don't know if he's going to be okay with it, but we shall see. It's kind of, oh, that's not the white one. Ah. Uh, it's kind of one of those things where I have had this character in mind and I want to bring her out, but I just want to make sure he's okay with it. Um, yeah, see if I adjust the camera so you can actually see me painting for some shots, not happening because of certain angles. But I do make a point of going back so you can see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back over here through this area and add in the white flecked tips that the Red Hawk has as well. Um, and for that, I'm just gonna go right back to bone white. And it's normally in this area right here where it happens. And it's sort of like individual feathers. So I'm just gonna kind of do a randomized little bit of dry brushing just to do that. And it's not a lot, it's just a little bit here and there that they have. So it kind of gets that effect going. Yeah, go ahead and do a bard by all means. If you want to do a bard, that'd be awesome. Especially for Waterdeep, it's a good, uh, it's definitely a good area for a bard to be. Other wing.
Okay. So it's very subtle, but it shows how the back of their feathers are a little bit more light in a couple areas. All right, so I need the space to dry a little bit. Let's see how the pupils, I should be able to do the pupils now. So that'll work. John is playing drums with glue sticks. <laughs> well, thank you, Double D, Double, double DW. I appreciate that. The muse. <laughs> that was clever, DCC. V, the musical. All right, back to my handy dandy. Dot. Manicure thing. This one you just gotta be a little bit more careful that you're not putting as much paint on. Because I don't want to completely blur out. Nice. Okay, so there's that one. Nope, that needs more paint, I can tell already. And this one's this one's the awkward angle, so. It's actually a really deep socket in there. There we go. There we go. So we've got his eye dotted with the pupil. So that pretty much takes care of almost everything. Oh, that's right. I wanted to do a little bit around his face. Scotty plays cardboard symbols. <laughs> that would be funny. Oh my God, could you imagine? Bill would probably be something like the synthesizer since he likes all the uh, 3D painting, not 3D painting, 3D printing stuff as well. I could see that being something funny. Alright, so I'm just gonna actually just add a little bit here because they sort of like these horn feathers. basically just framing around his face with some of the bone white to bring out that ridge that he has with his feathers. And there you go. All right, the base still needs to dry a little bit, so what I'll do is I'll... Oh, I dropped him on the floor. Oop, just kicked the camera. Let's see here. Why do I need a ponytail? Ah! Kick the camera again. You don't need a ponytail to paint. <laughs> no, you need a ponytail. Out of my reach. All right, here we go. Okay, so for voting as to what's going to be done up next. Let me move him out of the way so we can get some better focus here because the camera's going to want to focus on everything but what I'm going to show you. Oh, well, thank you, James. I had a chance to uh, read that. Okay, so here we have the ghouls from Nolzer's Marvus Miniatures. So those are an option for painting with their lovely stuck-out tongues and claw hands as a possibility. Same company, but the Wraith Inspector. And these are the translucent style ones, so that could be a little fun way to show how to work those. And this guy we've had for a while, it is Judas Blood Spider Vampire. And he's a pretty cool dude with these wings that are just 
epically large and kind of tattered at the bottom. Honestly, I don't wear ponytails too much because it gives me headaches. So the hair falls in the way a little bit. My apologies. And this is the Ghost King from Bones. So those are the four that are up for voting, which if you want to go to, put the link back in. That's the link on Twitter. So you can actually go and vote in a poll that's actually there. Or if you're not on Twitter, just plug in here in the chat, which one you would go for. Let me check and see how this is going. I'm gonna keep working on the base now. I'm gonna move up to Cold Gray from Vallejo for this one. Again, when this is over, I'm going to do a couple glamour shots of this guy. All right, so we have one for vampire. Vampire, one. Okay, so then, go back, there we go. And this is sort of Sleep on. I'm not looking for total coverage here, obviously, because we have that black on there. But I am looking to get more stone like. Bald Crafters Association. <laughs> oh my god, too funny. So you could have the Bald Crafters Association, the Beard, Bearded Crafters Association. Tons of options there, guys. This one's hard to show on the camera just because of the angles of all of these nooks and crannies of the rock. <laughs> it's giving you a sense of where the paint is going with this. Now the base, I will definitely be doing a wash on it to bring the nooks and crannies back out. Did I get everything? No, I did not. I missed a spot. <sighs> Another for the vampire. Okay. Boss saying time to go. Okay, bye, Christian. <laughs> See you later. Okay. I'm just gonna let that dry just a little bit. And here he is on his rock. And here he is all together. Done. This is yeah. He's done in my book. And again, there's just those little spots that they have going on. Let that dry, and then I'm gonna go and check over on Twitter to see how the poll's looking. Because that would be fun. Ooh, it's a tight one. It's actually the Ghost King and the Wraith Inspector. It sounds like Inspector, I gotta stop saying that. Um, but those two are neck and neck right now. The ghouls are out. They, they haven't even gotten any votes. So, and Judas Bloodspire is, well, second <laughs> until we have someone changing the vote. So if you are on Twitter, get over there and change that vote a little bit. Let's see what we can do there. Where did you guys just go in the chat? Oh god, now I know what you're talking about. Forming the group. <laughs> the group. Yeah, that should be good enough. And then what was I going to add? That's another one of these colors I was going to go for. 
No, no. I think it was actually the Earth. Alright, then we'll go back in and look on Earth, on the stone, go figure. Ooh, it might pop the chat back up. Alright, so we have another one. Let's see what happens there. There's two. Putting that down. Okay, here we go. Now this is really just going dry brush mode. So it's only in a few spots. I'm not completely covering things. And this is the earth color I just picked up to do that with. So what I'll do is this will get a wash and then I'll probably go back with, um, that's not the color I want, with a lighter gray to highlight it out. Okay, another, so there we go. Should not expect her that. Hey, Georgie, how you doing, buddy? Thank you for stopping by. They're talking about the uh, soon to be next mini for next week as to which one to paint. So we're taking votes. <laughs> if you're on Twitter, you can check out the poll. That's on Twitter. And put that to use. Or we have the option of ghouls, wraith and specter, a vampire, and a ghost king. <laughs> ghost king. Okay. GK1. Yeah, they're all really cool minis, so you can't go wrong. It was more, um, just wanted to get something spooky in there for the fun of things. Yep. Gotta get this one area by the foot over here. And then stone is pretty much ready for getting a wash once it dries a little bit. Okay, so we have the stone, and I'm going to, actually, I'm going to go with a uh, nice black wash, simple and basic, and then I'll go back in with a light gray to uh, pull out those higher ridges that are on these stones, and then I can figure out what kind of base I want to end up having him on. But he's pretty much set and drying. So here he is. Hi, Griffin. Cranky Griffin. See the wings a little bit there. But yeah, this is a really cool sculpt. I like the details they put into this one. And again, this is the Wiz Kids Griffin, if you want to get him. I do recommend it. All right, so let him dry. Let me go back over and see. I think the poll is close to closing. One minute left. Oh, oh, Ghost King just took the lead too. <laughs> Even with your votes. There we go. We might have. Uh... Okay, so as of right now, we have Ghost King. We'll see what happens with that. All right, so again, let me go through the list of things that are happening. I will see you next Wednesday for another one of the live stream lunch breaks. And then tomorrow double whammy game day for me at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time p.m. on Scraticus on Twitch. I will be playing a D&D 5e space themed game. Uh, it's a whole bunch of people getting together and we'll kind of see where it goes from there. But essentially it's uh, we're a crew on a ship and we just woke up from a cryogenic state. So we get to figure out what's going on there. So that one looks like a lot of fun. And then come 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Mini Terrain Domain. Myself, Scotty, Megan, and Jeremy will all be playing Sunless Citadel together with our various characters. So I get to bring out Cat Trail again, which I'm happy about because I'm really enjoying that particular character. And then let me see what else I have going on. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Monday, next Monday, October 1st, starts up the Waterdeep Dragon Heist uh, long-term campaign that I'm also doing on Mini Terrain Domain. Uh, Jake is not DMing this one, but he is a player. So we have Jake, myself, uh, Dwight, and Megan 
Uh, so we're going to be the characters, and then our DM is going to be the awesome Mike. And I did put the uh, really awesome promo film that, not film, <laughs> intro that Jake uh, created for it, which hopefully you can see on my Facebook page. And I think I posted it in Twitter too. So check those out as well. And then Wednesday, October 3rd, it's another one shot where I get to be a silver wormling, also in many terrain domain. That starts at 9 Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. And then it'll be Thursday, whoa, Thursday, <laughs> I'll be doing uh, Sunless Citadel again. So yeah, I'm getting online a little bit more and playing a lot more and I'm enjoying it. So uh, I try and let people know when those are happening. All right, I think we have... Ah, okay, so we have our winner, guys. Even when I've counted in your votes here. That's ah, funny how that jumps so quickly. Okay, so our winner is the Ghost King. Ta-da! So I'm going to take him out of the box. He's coming out of the box. And, yeah, he's going to need a little bit of a bath, but nothing too drastic. But here he is. Yoink. It's actually a really cool one because he's got this um, great cape in the back and then these really neat details in the front. So this is who you're going to see next week. This is the guy I'm going to get started. When do I find the time to sleep? Well, usually like at 11ish until about 6. <laughs> I do sleep. I'm just one of those personalities who's just always going, going, going and obviously on game nights. Yeah, you know, I'll stay up a little bit later, but I've always just been, uh, keep moving, keep going. All right, so Ghost King is our winner. Let me just make sure I haven't missed anything in the chat. Now I think we're caught up. Um, oh, thank you. I'm glad you really think it resembles a red tail hawk. I was looking at so many pictures of them obsessively so just because I want to make sure I get the look of it done. Uh, so that is it for me for today. Thank you everyone who came out to participate in the chat. I always appreciate your company during these things. And then uh, we'll get started on the Ghost King next week. So take care and have a great day. And hopefully I'll see some of you tomorrow, either on Scraticus's channel or over on Mini Terrain Domain's channel. All right. Take care, everyone. I'll talk with you later.